got a new office, I see. Hey, how are you? Welcome to the um, executive suite, I guess. Right? Looks like your office staff could do with a little shaping up, but otherwise I think it's okay. Uh, yeah, that's all right. So, did you order lunch for us? Yes, I did. Should be here just in a couple minutes. Look, take a look at these uh, listings for me. Tell me what you think. Office space. You've already got yourself a real estate agent? Well, yeah. Man, you've had a busy morning, I had I to move fast, you know. Tracy booted me from ELQ. I, uh, Got to do something before she sets a match to my office furniture, right? Yeah, I wouldn't put that past her. Well, let her do her worst. She can't touch me now. Not anymore. No. That's the spirit. Yeah, but I do have to find a place today, right? I think we've just got one more thing we have to take care of first. Well, I wish I didn't have to work, because we could go to the cafeteria and get some coffee and talk. That'd be nice. I wish we could, too. Sorry. Well, 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 look at the two of you, thick as thieves. Oh, now my day is really made. Lucy, do you know I actually missed your boring cliches? Let me tell you a little secret. I didn't miss you at all, and I'm here strictly on hospital business. Really? Yes, really, as you've probably heard because you hear everything, I have been made executive director of the spa, and I'm here to pick up medical waiver forms for our clientele. How nice. Very nice. Now, will you scurry off and get them for me, please? I'll be right back. Mm, I'm not going anywhere. Dominique, um, I certainly hope I wasn't interrupting anything between the two of you. Would you really care if you were? No. You know, I don't mean to offend you, but you actually look rather awful. Oh, really? About a minute ago, I was just fine. No, no, really. You look very, very mm -hmm. pale, kind of. I was off, Lucy. Well, pale and touchy today, aren't we? You know, I might suggest you visit Tom Hardy, but... No, I can't suggest that. I guess you've already done the psychiatric routine, haven't shut you? Shut up, all right? Will you just shut up? I am here for simple medical tests. Are you satisfied? Test? Um, what kind of tests? None of your business. Tell me something, Dominique. Are you feeling a bit faint? Lucy, just go away, okay? No, you know, I'm a lot smarter than you think I am, and I happen to know the signs very well. You are pregnant, aren't you? What? That's it. That's what this whole thing is all about. I get it now. You got yourself knocked up just so Scott would marry you. Let's see. Uh, well, I, um, I gotta get going here soon. Can't stay since you want some banana bread? Yeah, come on. It's a baker fun. Well. Hey, Robin, could you hand me that pan, please? Yeah. Sure. Right. We've been making banana bread all day long. Now. She was working with me, too, but she just now took a nap. My old family recipe. Know what I mean? This is uh, not just a social call, is it? Yeah, I, I went to court. And? Appeal was turned down. <laughs> It's nice of you to come by and give us the news in person. Well, I wish I could have gotten you off. I'll look out with you. Where are you headed? School. One more class. Oh, okay. I'll, uh, I'll walk you there. Scotty, wait. String and Dominique. Thank you. So long, Mac. Got a soup left. Guess you could freeze it and have it on another day if you like. You know, why don't you take a break from all this? Well, this is exactly what I want to do. I just want to hang around here with you and Maxie and Robin. All right. But I want to take you out someplace special tonight. I just want to stay home tonight. Just want to have dinner right in here. I want to tell Maxie some stories. I just want to spend time with all of us all together here. All right. If that's what you want to do. Sounds good enough to me. As long as I get to cook, though, I'm going to make my uh, special pasta veggie magnifico. <laughs> okay, you're on. And uh, keep the banana bread coming. It's awful good. I'm glad you like it. I'm going to have a lot to freeze. Oh my, it's getting late. Bobby's gonna come over in just a few minutes. I've got a minute, so I've got to clean up. 
Bobby's coming over? Yeah, she's going to help me take everything over to the brownstone. Am I going to say bye to Maxie? <laughs> you know, I don't know why I'm having this conversation. You know, I can't believe it all. She let Scott make me think that he loved you, and that's why he married you. He just had to marry you. This is such a joke. It's turned out to be a big, fat joke. There's no getting through to you, is there? You are warped. I am not warped. You should listen to what I have to say. Scott is going to hate being tied to your apron strings and playing the happy little husband, and he's going to hate the fact that you tricked him. I give up. You know, if you had some brains, you would listen, and you would come clean with Scott, because he is going to leave you alone. He doesn't like fatherhood, and he doesn't want to be hung up changing diapers, and you're going to be doing it all by yourself. Say goodbye, Lucy. Lucy, Amy... I was late. I got held up in an emergency. Yeah, I kind of had my hands full myself. Mm-hmm. So I see. So, MRI set. Are you ready? You feel okay? Well, I think after a confrontation with Lucy and MRI, we'll probably be a walk in the park. It certainly won't be as painful. <clears throat> yeah. Listen, everything's set. I'm going to be with you for the whole process. So you'll be fine, okay? Okay. Come on. Smile. Mm -hmm. Bored oh with me already, huh? No, 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 that's not it, Jen. Uh, it's just that... Uh, I know. So much to do, so little time. Right. Uh, businessman's curse, I suppose. That's all. Well, I have the perfect solution for that, and I don't want any arguments. Uh -oh. <laughs> I want you to take an hour off today and go to the spa. Oh, Jen, I can't. Listen, one no hour. Way. A massage would do wonders for you, Paul. Yeah, I know, I'm sure. It would, all Jenny, but... that tension would just disappear. And it's my treat, so you have to say yes. I've already made all the arrangements, so just all you got to do is show up. All right. I'll be there. Okay. You promise? Yeah, I promise. Mm. I'll see you. You know, you make it really hard to say goodbye. You know that, don't you? <laughs> After my uh, massage. Right. I wouldn't hit you on a bet. I might I might just need you a little bit. I need. I need. I need. I need. All right, Marco. Why no call? Why no info on Paul? Because I was involved. Because you because have Because I was right? working. Because, because I have nothing and right. And because but, you've done nothing right. But I wouldn't say that. You have until midnight tonight, Marco. If you do not come up with something on Paul and Jenny by midnight, you will be off my payroll for good. You know, I need your cooperation in order to foster any sort of creative ideas. You know that? Uh-huh. Maybe if you'd use your head instead of your hands... You'd come up with some creative ideas on your own. What, you come up with any ideas on your own? You bet I have. I got Paul evicted from his office. Did you? And I'm not going to stop until I have him completely discredited in business, number one. Number two, prove he's an unfit father. And number three, ride him out of town, tarred and feathered. If anybody can do that, you can. Thank you, Marco. I'm going to take that as a compliment. But, are you sure that you want to expend this kind of negative creative energy towards this you know what Marco this, kind of this negativity? is worth every negative ion I can muster and if you're not the man for the job just tell me right now I'm on your side I keep telling you that good midnight I don't know what I did with those lists did you know what I did with them uh let's see if I can help you find them thank you I probably overdid it with the lists but I thought maybe you would want to know don't you worry I will follow it to the letter I know you will. Uh, these pajamas, they're a little bit short in the arms. I'm actually starting to grow out of them. Just didn't have the chance to go out and buy her some new ones. She's gonna grow up so fast. I'm sorry. It's okay. The worst part is I won't be able to be there to watch her grow up. You are definitely going to be a part of Maxie's life. We'll uh, both see to that. 
And we are not going to make a single decision about anything unless we talk to you first. I love you guys so much. We love you too, honey. Don't forget it, Felicia. Here you go. Thank you for understanding. Well, I guess this is ready to pack up. Listen, uh, I'll call you this evening. Okay. And, uh, if you think of anything, you call me, okay? I will. So let me help you with those. No, it's okay, Max. It's all right. They're light. I can match. They are light. to go through all this pain. I'm sure make it go away somehow. Wouldn't be so hard if it was just me. But how am I going to explain this separation to Maxie? We should have gotten out of town, like I said in the first place. Oh, now we both agreed that was the wrong thing to do. Yeah, I know, but you wouldn't be going through all this pain. There's so little time. I'm going to have to explain the separation to her. You don't have to do it alone. If she's up from her nap, I'm going to go do it now. All right, I'll be right here. Talk to me. You look like you lost your best friend. I can't believe that I'm doing this. Well, I'm sorry then. You know, I didn't ask you to come over, so why don't you go on? Okay, fine. You can't say I didn't try here. Fine. Goodbye. Fine, goodbye. Scott. All right, if, if, you, if you insist, then I, I will tell you. Fine. it out okay it's um it's us us there is no us I get that now okay I understand you've been trying to tell me that since I got back into town and now I understand it's dead it's over it's put it's just finished are we playing a game here no I, I just have realized that you um you have made a, a New little life with your new little wife, and... And what? And I am going to make a new life for myself. And while there is no room in your life for me, there is certainly no room in my life for you. So here we go. We are playing games here. Oh, you know something? You are a big bozo. You wouldn't know the truth if it hit you over the head. Wait. Look, I'm not going to waste my breath, okay? I'm just going to say this once. We are history. Finished. Scott Bowen, goodbye. We're good. Goodbye. That's a good one. That MRI, that was quite an experience. No idea I'd have to hold still for so long, you know. You did great. So tell me, what's the diagnosis? Do I just take a couple ibuprofen and call you in the morning, huh? Uh, you know, I think before we go over all this, I'd like to call Scott. Is that okay? Why, why do you want to do that, Tony? I just thought it'd be nice if you could be here with him and you could hear the news together. Yeah. We're not talking just stress headaches, are we? No. No. Um, you know, I think it'd be better if I just, if I just hear this by myself. So you remember the CAT scan that I ran and I said I thought I saw a spot on your brain and that was causing your headaches? Yeah, and that's why you wanted to do this test today, so, so, um, you could take a better look. Right. Um, the MRI is the most sensitive diagnostic tool we have. So what, what did you find out? 
a melanoma. It's a growth on your brain. And it's uh, malignant. Uh, right now, I have to figure out what I'm going to do with this, um, with this growth. What sort of, uh, treatment are, are we doing? I mean, um, are we talking surgery? Or is it radiation? I mean, if it's radiation, do you think? I'll lose my hair. Oh, God. Oh, God. What are we going to do about it, Scott? Let me call Scott. No. Don't worry. I mean, I know you think I'm going to fall apart. It's the shock. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to fall apart. I know you're not. But you do need some support right now because this is not going to be easy. Tony, would you do me a favor? I need to know everything. I want you to explain it to me and keep explaining it to me. Okay. I have to understand. Okay, all right. Um, that makes sense. So, the, um, the growth of the tumor that you have uh, is uh, actually several lesions. Lesions? Yeah, that's tumors that vary in size. So the MRI showed that these lesions go deep into the brain, uh -huh. and some of them are quite large, and that's the reason that you've had the severe headaches. Okay. Yep. I see. And so when I saw the results of the MRI, um, I did another procedure, and that showed the malignancy. Is that clear? Yeah. That's fine. <clears throat> so, why don't you tell me about the treatments? I mean, is, is the treatment going to be surgery? Uh, no, it's uh, inoperable. Why is, why is it inoperable? The lesions, the tumor, has embedded itself into the tissue of the brain. And so if we operate, that means that we have to cut out that tissue, which means that we do more harm than we do good. And wait a minute, though. I mean, I thought that brain tissue could restore itself. I mean, you hear cases all the time, Tony, where people have one side of their brain injured, but then the other side will pick up and, and do the functions. I mean, that could happen to me. I mean, that could happen in time, couldn't it? Couldn't it? No. It couldn't. But if I wanted to um, go ahead with this operation, I could. I, I could take the risk. Yeah. So, um, um, so what, what, what would happen afterwards? Well, you'd have some um, severe neurological deficiencies. Such as? You know, you're going to be paralyzed, uh, unable to speak, unable to understand what people say to you. You don't need to tell me anymore, Tony. I've heard enough. You know, this is just so hard to accept. And I don't even feel sick. I mean, I'm, except for the headaches. I know. Tony, all that stuff you told me about, is, is that going to happen anyway? I mean, are these things going to continue to grow inside me year after year until I'm really, I'm really a nothing? No. Let me tell you something. You will never, it's crazy, you will never be... You will never be a nothing. Diseases. 
we're silly, you know? <laughs> Listen, diseases will take, like, a part out of you. Um, but it doesn't change you. It doesn't change Dominique. You remain Daddy. Dominique. You get it, Dominique? Okay. Tell me. Emma. I gotta die. Yeah. But, you know, uh, there's nothing that you could have done about it because the tumor was already long progressed before so, you had any symptoms. No. So there's no blame. So, so tell me, how long do I have? I don't know that. Can you give me a guess? Six months or less, you know. Uh, it's over. There, um, actually, there are some treatments that you could do. They have some side effects, and I think you need to discuss them with Scott. So if you want me to talk to the both of you together, or I can talk to him alone, whatever. Um, I think that it would be best if I tell Scott when the time's right. But you've got to promise me that you are not going to tell anyone about this right now. Not even Bobby. Got it. I mean, I, I, I will talk God. I just, uh, I just have to find a way to do it. Do you, uh, do you want to use my office for a minute? I am, um, I think that I have had just about enough of hospitals for one day, and, uh, I need to get some fresh air, okay? Don't move, Jenny. Well, oh, don't well you're, about, you're about. I dropped my earring, and you're just about to step on it. I think. Uh, your earring? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I didn't mean to make you jump, but I've really got to find it. Uh, I can, I can help you look. Okay, it, it looks kind of like... You okay? Yeah. No, no, no really, I'm fine. Don't worry about it. But, but let's let's find your earring. Well, it, it looks it looks like uh -huh. this one. I'd just die if I lost it. Well, then we'll just have to find it, won't we? Yeah, I know I'm overreacting, but my sister gave it to me, and you know how those kind of things are. Ah, aha. Uh -huh. Wait a minute. Ah, uh, is, is, is this it? Thank you. <laughs> you know what it's like to have something you can't live without? are better than I thought they'd be. But could you say that a little louder, please, for the listening audience out here? Mmm. Mm. Marco. Mmm. <laughs> a little higher. Oh, well, there you are. You found your way in. Yes, yes. Colleen is going to be your masseuse today, and she is one of our best. I think you'll really enjoy it. Okay. If you say so. Fine. Thank you. Well, may I say... <laughs> nice. A very, very nice. You know, I really think that Tracy's loss is ladies' game everywhere. Lucy, unfortunately, I'm not available, and your reputation does precede you, doesn't it? Oh, here's Colleen. Colleen, just <coughs> in the nick of time. Hi. Paul, Colleen, Colleen, Paul. She does have the best hands in the business, so I will leave you two to do it. Thanks, Lucy. Great. <clears throat> um, I suppose you want me on the... Yeah, I'd like to start with you on your stomach. Uh... <clears throat> And if you have any especially tense areas, you just let me know and I'll work well, them Well, it's just sort of a general overall tension, you know. Calling. Well, uh, 
Don't worry. I'm sure that you'll leave here feeling like a new man. You ready? I'm ready. Now, this is something else that your great-grandmother taught me when I was your age. Whenever she would go away, she would draw me a circle just like this, called a love circle. And she would hang it up in my room so I could look at it and I would know that I was never, ever, ever alone. And look over here. Who's this right here in the middle, Maxie? Max. That's right. That's Maxie with a big heart. And look who's over here. There's Mommy. Mommy's the closest because Mommy loves you very much. Love you, Mommy. I love you. And all these other people love you, too. And they're going to look out for you. They're going to keep you safe because I have to go away. Look at me, sweetheart. I have to go away, and I don't know how long I'm going to be. But all these people are going to look out for you. Because they love you, too. And I love you. I love you, Ma. Give me a hug. Give me a big hug. Give me a hug. I love you, baby. Yeah, I'll do some research before I go to court in the morning. Scott, we know how much pressure you're under on this case, and we don't want to add to it. Yeah, well, I'll do anything I can for Felicia and Maxie. I just wish that things had turned out differently, though. It's so unfair. We all know that she's innocent, and then we don't have a, a shred of evidence. Well, hopefully the judge will be lenient in its sentencing. Hello, sweetheart. Hi. I'm, I'm not interrupting a business meeting, am I? No. No, we were just finished. Matter of fact, we should go. We have to get groceries. Yeah. Here, let me walk you out. And listen, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you in the morning, okay? We'll work this out. Nothing to Bye. worry about. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. See you. Yep. Hi. Hey. You okay? I am now that you're here. No. You have no idea how much I need you. <laughs> Anglos, they just don't know how to have a good time. Mm. Well, Lucy said you were the best. This is great. I'm not sure about the reference, but I'm very glad you're satisfied. Jenny! 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 It's Brian. You planned this, didn't you? Come here. You planned this. Mm. Honey, it only gets better. Bye now. Mm. I'm all yours. Whatever you say. Okay. Mm. I'm in the car, I think. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, that's good. That's it. You've been so tense with everything that's mm -hmm. been going on. Who better to relax you than me? No, no, no. You got strong hands. This is great. This is going to be some really good stuff. I think I have a pad over here. Have you got a pen somewhere? Oh. Mm. You know, I, I don't think I realized how tense I was. Just, oh, oh, yeah, right there. Do it, right, right there. Yeah, do it, do it. Right, oh, yeah. Oh, Scott. Mm, God. If you did this for me every day, then Tracy's worst whatever would just roll right off me like water. You know what I mean? Forget about Tracy. Okay, it shouldn't be too hard. She's pathetic. Mm -hmm. She deserves what she gets. Well, we're not going to talk about Tracy. <clears throat> much Marco! Marco! It's Tracy. Tracy, you better get out of here now. Come on. I know you're in there. Come on. You are an absolute living nightmare. You know that? <laughs> you haven't seen anything yet, Tom. I ought to have you arrested.
arrested, Tracy. You know that? Fine. I'll make sure they take you, too. You'll be a big hit in the holding tank. <laughs> oh, look. Perfect. Two lowlifes in the same cubicle. Hi, Mom. Oh, hi. Speaking How are you? of lowlifes, what were you doing naked on a massage table with her? Use your imagination, dear. Shouldn't be too I hard will to when out. I speak to my lawyer and tell him about the public orgy you had. Not a good idea. I wouldn't do that if I were you, Tracy. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Excuse me. I didn't hear you. I said are I you wouldn't threatening do that. me? Oh, please don't let her get to you. Oh, little Jennifer to the rescue. <laughs> Let's go. Come on. Jennifer. You look really good in a massage parlor. Is that where you met the senator? <laughs> Yendy, Yendy, Yendy. You know, I never liked you. Wait, 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 w
feel the snow on my eyelashes. And on my cheek, too. But there's more than one on your cheek. I forgot how wonderful snow feels. How does it feel to you? Well, like snow. It's a miracle what nature does for us. We just take it for granted. That we do. I'm gonna miss the snow. I'm gonna miss waking up in the morning and hearing that stupid dog bark. I'm gonna miss planting flowers with Maxie in the spring. I'm gonna miss drinking hot chocolate with you and talking about stupid things. I'm gonna lose all these things. You're not gonna lose them, Felicia. Don't you? Don't you know that every sensation you've ever experienced in life is yours forever? Don't you know that? No. Well, it's true. I mean, if you want to remember crazy dogs barking, or planting flowers with Maxie, or our stupid conversations, all you got to do is go inside and find them and experience them again. I wish I could be more like you.
this is Charles Gibson. And Joan London. Tomorrow, L.A. Wyatt victim Reginald Denny. Plus the attorneys who argued Roe v. Wade.